Now coming to the one of the most important topics that is the regulation of respiration. Regulation of respiration, various class uh, FMCQs for lesions have been asked. So let's try to revise them a bit. So the regulation of respiration comes under neural regulation, chemical regulation and non-chemical regulation. So coming to the neural regulation of respiration, which is the prime primary form of respiration, because re respiration is voluntary or involuntary, most of the times it is involuntary. But can we control it voluntarily? Yes, if I ask you to breath hold, you can hold it, but for a little time. If I ask you to hyperventilate, you can do it, but for a little time. Most of the times it is involuntary. So involuntary is the major mechanism. But we'll try to finish the voluntary because it's smaller to finish it. So voluntary control comes from the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex through its corticospinal tract. This tract is very, very important. Through its corticospinal tract, it gives impulses to the respiratory neurons. And finally, they will reach the respiratory muscles and do the voluntary control. With respect to voluntary control, there is one important syndrome or curse which we call that is called as Ondine's curse. This Ondine's curse is based on a mythological story. What has happened in this story is there is an Ondine which is a water nymph. She comes to the land and she meets a king and gets married to him. But when while she was leaving back to the sea, she gets a promise from the king that she should he should not marry any other women. But as and when time passed, the king when the water nymph has left, the king has married somebody else. The father of the water nymph becomes very angry and he curses the king with a severe curse. What is that curse is, he curses the king that is only his voluntary respiration will be present. So the king was thinking what to do? The curse is very worse because this voluntary control of respiration can be activated only when the person is awake. As and when the person goes to sleep, what will happen is, the voluntary control, he cannot do it and ultimately he will try. In this story, the king will try to stay awake for a longer period but due to sheer exertion, he will go for sleep and ultimately going in for a death. So that is the story behind this online curse. In online curse, what has happened is, there is only voluntary control. The involuntary control is taken off. But the involuntary control is the one which is creating the normal rhythm of respiration which is very very important. So now let's discuss about the involuntary control. The involuntary control is happening at the level of brainstem. In the brainstem, we have the medulla and the pontine region. Both of them are essential. Out of this, the medullary centers are the one which generate the impulses. And the pontine ones are the one which modulate these impulses. So I would like to call this medulla as the generator. I like to call this medulla as the generator. Whereas the pontine, it is best to call it as the fine tuner because it is like fine tuning the FM radios. So there will be a frequency, multiple frequencies will be there. But when you pinpoint it at one place, the sounds will be heard better. That, that is the role of pons also. It fine tunes the respiration, even though the generation is happening at the level of medulla. Since the medulla generates the rhythm, let's discuss its centers. It has two centers. One is the DRG, another one is VRG. What is this DRG? DRG is nothing but the dorsal respiratory group of neurons. Then what is this VRG? VRG is nothing but the ventral respiratory group of neurons. Then there are two more centers in the pons, which is pneumotaxic center and apneustic center. Now let's discuss all the centers individually. Coming to the medullary centers. The medullary centers has the DRG and VRG. This DRG is the one which is considered as a center integration center for respiration. They are the ones which receive all the impulses and they integrate the respiration. So basically, J initiate the inspiratory ramps. They are involved in initiating the respiration inspiratory ramps. So its primary function is inspiration. It takes in inspiration. What is the role of VRG? It has several group of nuclei. It helps in both in inspiration as well as expiration. But during normal time, it is inactive. It does not, VRG does not play any major role during a normal breathing. Only the DRG is generating rhythm and the expression will happen passively. But during a forceful time, we need the help of VRG. There is one more center called as the pre bodzinger complex, which is now there it is said to be located in the VRG. This center is the one which is generating the respiratory rhythm. 
since it is generating the respiratory rhythm it is also called as the pacemaker of respiration like we have the sa node in the heart which is the pacemaker of heart for the respiratory system this pre bodzinger complex is the pacemaker of respiration i'll tell you one interesting story about this bodzinger bodzinger actually how did they name this center is ideally they found a center which is very very vital for respiration but the scientists did not name it when he goes to the party what he does is he cheers as a glass of wine and that wine glass is nothing but a bodzinger bodzinger is nothing but a white wine and finally they named this complex as bodzinger complex so that is the reason behind this name so coming to the pontine centers so pontine centers we have two one is the apneustic center which is located in the lower pons another one is the pneumotaxic center which is located in the upper pons what is the function of this apneustic center remember apneustic center is like a naughty person what he does is he keeps on firing the inspiratory neurons so whenever apneustic center is very active what he will do is he'll keep on inspiring but is it good if we don't expire the person will ultimately die because of apneusis but this is a naughty guy he is continuously makes any every person inspire 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 what is the pneumotaxic center so this apneustic center has to be kept in a check this pneumotaxic center does that what it does is it inhibits the apneustic center after some time so whenever the inspiration goes beyond a certain limit this pneumotaxic center will inhibit the apneustic center so this pneumotaxic center is usually switching from inspiration to expiration since apneustic center is very naughty not one person is sufficient to control him we need two impulses the impulses from the way guy also inhibits the apneustic center so apneustic center is kept inhibited by two people one is the pneumotaxic center another one is the peripheral vagus these two are keeping the apneustic center inhibited now coming to the lesions at various levels previously how did the scientists identify the function of each of these places because of cutting in various levels these are experimental setup since it is asked in mcqs it is important for us also so here basically there are four lesions that is done and they have studied what is the effect of it they have done four lesions plus they have also studied the fact what happens whenever the vega is present and whenever vega is absent what is the function of vega vega's function is to sense the inspiration so whenever a person is inspiring the vega will sense and it will send its impulses to the apneustic center to stop the excessive inspiration so this is the function of vega so they have done with vega also without vega by cutting the vega also so let's see what has happened they have done four lesions i would suggest you to go in the similar order that i have written here first one is below medulla let's try to do with below medulla then above pons then mid pons then ponto medullary junction cut is in the ponto medullary junction so let's see what happens in each of these lesions so coming to the below medulla which is the easiest one so whenever we cut just below the medulla now tell me any neurons coming out can any respiratory neurons reach the respiratory muscles the answer is no so what will happen to the respiration the answer is pretty simple respiration completely ceases there is a respiratory arrest respiration ceases in both whether vega is intact or not it doesn't matter because none of the impulses are coming out of the medulla so respiration ceases in below medullary region now coming to above pons when i cut above pons all the respiratory center are preserved nothing is happening to the respiratory center obviously the person will have other problems but above pons there is no problem with the respiratory center so what will happen all of them are normal so the breathing also will be normal if the vega is intact now we are trying to cut the vega above pons plus vega is also cut now what will happen what is the function of vega it will tell the apneustic center to stop it but now it cannot tell that so what will happen the breathing will become slow and deep because in vega cut what is happening is here still the pneumotaxic center is telling the apneustic center to stop it here impulses from the pneumotaxic center is coming to the apneustic center because all the centers are preserved that we haven't cut it yet so that's why in vega if only vega is cut what will happen the apneustic center is under two control one is from the pneumotaxic another from the vega we have cut only one person so still the inspiration will be slow and deep because there is some inhibition from the pneumotaxic center now coming to the third lesion that is pontomedullary junction this is another easier lesion to understand 
Pontum medullary junction, when you cut, what is happening? All the pontine centers are gone. Only the medullary neurons are coming down. So what will happen is, I told you, what is the function of pons? Pons is like a fine tuner. Now the fine tuning is gone. So what will happen to the respiration? It's pretty simple. The respiration will not be fine tuned. It will be irregular. So in this condition, it will be irregular. Now coming to the final lesion, that is a mid-pontine lesion. Mid-pontine lesion. That is the fourth lesion we are considering, which is a mid-pontine lesion. What happens here is, whenever there is a cut in the mid-pontine region, now pneumotaxy cannot influence the apneustic center. So what will happen? The inspiration will be slow and deep whenever there is a vagus is intact. These two lesions are almost similar. They both are slow and deep. In the above one, pneumotaxic center is present. In the below one, vega is present. But coming to the fourth lesion, mid-pontine lesion, that is pneumotaxy cannot control it, as well as the vega is also cut. Now, this is also cut. This is also cut. There is nobody to inhibit the naughty guy in the house. That is the apneustic center. So, what will happen to the breathing? That will produce an inspiratory spasm. That is nothing but it is called as apneusis. Apneusis can happen. So, all these cuts are very, very important for MCQs. So, this slide is a must know for MCQs. Now, recently one questions are being asked. What happens to the voluntary respiration above pons? Above pons, all of them is fine. The involuntary part, everything is preserved. But voluntary form is absent. So whenever there is a cut above pons, the voluntary control will be lost. 